Hi, I'm Avez Khan. Uh, today I'm with, with Bill Davis, who's the CEO of Zgen. Thank you for joining us, Bill. You're welcome, buddy. Um, why don't you tell us a bit about Zgen? What do you do, and uh, what's the innovation? Uh, Zgen is focused on taking ordinary waste streams, which would otherwise end up in landfills, and through a proprietary gasification process, converting the organic material into a syngas, which can then be used as a fuel in a variety of industrial and commercial markets. Okay, and how big is the market for these kind of waste material and construction debris, right? Uh, it is uh, it is enormous, almost beyond description. I mean, in, globally, there are 4 billion tons, with a B, 4 billion tons a year of uh, solid waste which is produced. And so that's agricultural waste, municipal waste, construction, debris, um, industrial, and hazardous materials. In the United States, uh, those five waste streams, I think, add up to about a billion tons a year. And every year, there's another billion tons that are created. So in spite of recycling, source reduction, being smarter about uh, conservation, uh, there's more people and we produce more stuff and effectively there's a billion tons a year in the U.S. Sure. So is there any reason why you chose to focus on construction debris to start off with? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. It's actually because it's the easiest feedstock to focus on. There is uh, an ample supply of it in almost every market. Uh, it's very benign. So nationally there's over 100 million tons that are produced every year and uh, it is uh, benign, it is uh, consistent in the sense that it's relatively homogenous compared to municipal waste, which is really the largest alternative, is uh, very heterogeneous. It has environmental problems associated with it, um, and it doesn't have as good of a um, BTU value or energy value. So construction debris is an easier place to start, we think. I see. So I assume you're going to be building plants, right? Uh, and, and one of the questions that comes to mind is that you're obviously a venture financed company um, and you need, it's a very capital intensive business and the venture capitalists don't want to write huge checks to finance plans right. the project financing people want technology that is proven, right? So how do you fill that financing gap and what's your experience so far? Uh, delicately, that's how we do it. <laughs> uh, I, I think our experience has been good but clearly that is a key issue, and, and when we started the company, we felt that this is going to be the hardest thing that we deal with, is how you get from successful technology demonstration to commercial viability when, as you say, there isn't a natural uh, financing or capital partner in the middle of that space. And I think um, the way we've resolved it is to try and make the space as small as possible in the middle, which is to say that... Um, Venture capital firms are now doing more to prove out technology and get it to the point where it is commercially viable, even if it means equity financing first commercial facilities or participating in that space when they didn't used to want to play there, as you point out. Uh, and secondly, I think that uh, private equity firms are dipping down in order to get access to deal flow. So three years ago, they wouldn't touch a pre-revenue company. Now they're touching promising pre-revenue companies because if they don't, they, uh, uh, that company may go straight, it may bypass private equity and go straight to conventional banking in order to uh, sure. provide the uh, capital. But the other thing that we're doing is we've modified our business strategy a bit as the price of building out a power plant has increased. So when I started the company four years ago, it was uh, maybe 55 million to build a full-scale plant. Today, it's double that. Uh, so clearly, it's 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 not that easy to go from a technology demonstration mm -hmm. to a 110 million dollar power plant. One of the things that we've recognized is uh, we don't necessarily need to provide that infrastructure. We can uh, make the syngas and deliver the gas to industrial partners that have already invested in that infrastructure, which does two things. One is that it eliminates about $70 million of capex per plant. But then the second thing it does is it compresses the time frame for us to actually get to commercial viability because it's really just a matter of making syngas and delivering it to an industrial boiler. It's well, that's great. Business. I mean, uh, I think that's a very innovative business model. And how is the market acceptance to that model so far? Uh, we think it's good, especially in a world where the price of natural gas and residual oil 
are increasing over time. So uh, right now, if you look at residual oil, it's about $17 an MMBTU. We can make a renewable syngas to displace residual oil for under $6 an MMBTU. So the market, when faced with you know the opportunity to trade off a dirty fossil fuel for a renewable uh, gas with much lower emissions profile uh, and, and the ability to save money along the way is pretty much all over the idea. So let me just uh, close off by asking that waste to fuel and waste to energy has been around, the concept has been around for a long time, right? Very um, long why, time. Um, what do you think is going to be different this time around than, than previously? Well, I think that I think uh, I think timing is everything, right? So, I think that there were some interesting technologies, possibly starting 25 years ago. I think that they were way too early. Uh, you didn't have, broadly speaking, you didn't have the infrastructure in place uh, to to make those technologies successful. So, I think some of it is just that uh, that we have evolved to the point where there is better infrastructure in order to enable some of these technologies. Uh, to succeed, I think part of it is rising energy prices. I mean, uh, if you've got a marginal technology, uh, and, and we do not think that we fall into that category by any means, but if one does have a m marginal technology, uh, you know, if, if energy prices are three times what they were 10 years ago, uh, then even if you don't have the greatest technology in the world, you're going to make the economics work. Uh, and then I think the third thing is I think that there is more people coming into the category who can take ideas and turn them into successful companies. I think that historically, like a lot of early stage categories, uh, they tend to be dominated by um, true believers. And I think what's happening is the true believers are getting pushed out and you have people that understand how to build businesses and assemble financing and, and do what it takes to create a successful company. Well, that's great. I mean, um, it looks like you have a very innovative company with a great technology. Um, so wish you all the success and thank you for joining us. Have a waste time. Uh, today we're with Bill Davis, who's the CEO of ZJAS.